The Voice of Evangelism brings you revival in America September 20th through the 22nd at the Hickory Metro Convention Center. There will be three speakers, David Lankford, Bishop Jimmy D. Smith, and Bishop Jonathan Lankford bringing an uncompromising message. There will be three services Friday, three services Saturday, and one service Sunday morning. Come and see what God is doing. For more information, go to our website at www.thevoiceofevangelism.com. Around the world, the Spirit is moving and a voice is being heard. Welcome to The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford. You can write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. We'll give you that address again at the close of today's broadcast. But here now is David Langford. Hello, friends. David Langford here today. We'd like to welcome each of you to this edition of the Voice of Evangelism International Ministries. We welcome you today wherever that you are, and we thank you for allowing us to come into your home, your place of business, your office, wherever that you might be, to bring to you an uncompromising message from the Word of God. Before we get back into the program, I do want to make mention of our upcoming revival meeting at the Hickory Metro Convention Center, which is in Hickory, North Carolina. The dates are September the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. There'll be three services on Friday, two services Friday morning, one service Friday night, two services Saturday morning, one service Saturday night, and then another service on Sunday morning, Following the Sunday morning service, we're going to be serving communion. And following that, we're going to have a baptismal service as well. So if you can, come be with us. It's free of charge. We just ask that you call or write us or go to our website and contact us and just tell us how many people are coming in your party that we might make the proper seating arrangements. So if you'll do that for me, that would be such a great blessing. Also, the DVD series that we did on Has America Become a Harlot Nation. There were 54 one-half-hour uh, uh, TV programs, a total of 27 hours of teaching from the book of Jeremiah, and the, the, the topic is Has America Become a Harlot Nation? And we're offering that for a love gift of $100. That's postage included and everything. So if you'd like to get a set of those that would be great for a Bible study, then I invite you to make contact with us and get those. Our mailing address is The Voice of Evangelism, Post Office Box 502, Kaser, that's C-A-S-A-R, North Carolina, 28020. And we'll get that out to you just as quickly as we get your information. Amen. We've been talking about the need to be sober and the need to be vigilant. We took our scripture text from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, where Peter said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Our nation, my friend, is in great distress. To be honest with you, there is a illusory spirit over this nation. Most everything that you hear, most everything that you see on television is a lie. We are living under a spirit of deception. Deception is Satan's means, his mode, his method to destroy America and to destroy the church of the living God. Satan's greatest tool is deception. In the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, and Jesus had just closed out that great chapter in chapter 23, he went out of the temple and he sat down at the Mount of Olives. And he told the disciples, he said, you see this great building, talking about Herod's temple. He said, it's going to be destroyed there will not be one stone left upon another. And they responded to that statement. And in Matthew 24, verse 3, they said, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and, and the end of the world 
or the end of the age. Most people, when they read that or quote that, they pluralize the word sign. They say signs. But no, they said what will be the sign. The sign. I want you to get that. Because Jesus is trying to get them to understand the power and the gravity of deception. And that is the sign of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 23, uh, 24, 4, he said, take heed, take heed. We, 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 we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. We need to be taking heed. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So the paramount sign that Jesus is speaking of is the sign of deception. And everything in our world right now is operating under a spirit of deceit and one of deception. There's so much propaganda there's so much lying. There's so much dishonesty. There is so much hypocrisy throughout every segment of this nation. I cannot overly emphasize how great the need is for every one of us to be fasting, to be praying, to be walking in the Spirit of God that we might hear, that we might know the voice of God where God can lead us and guide us and direct us. Amen. We are living in a day of great peril. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And Paul said, from such, turn away. Turn away from those who deny the power of the Holy Ghost. Turn away from those who deny the lordship of Christ in your church, in your sanctuary, where the Spirit of God can move throughly and do everything He wants to do in the hearts and lives of people. If there's no Holy Ghost in the church, you're not going to see God do anything because that's how God moves today. He moves through the Holy Ghost. He personally is not here on the earth. He said, but I'm going to send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him because he dwelleth within you. And, 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 and so what we got happening right now in America is a tremendous spirit of deception, duplicity. People really don't know the truth hardly about anything. I don't know about you, but I want to know the truth. So Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Twice, twice in that passage, Jesus used the word many. Many would come in his name and deceive many. That tells me unequivocally, for the most part, the world is going to be utterly deceived and snared by the fallacies and the falsehoods of Satan. And it's happening right now in America. I said it's happening right now in America. And while I'm emphasizing this, I humbly ask you to pray. Pray that the sitting president, Joe Biden, can finish his term, which would be unto January the 20th, 2025. I have great consternation that if somehow this Jezebel can get into the White House, she will not leave. This election is one of the most 
needful elections, but it needs to go the right way. It needs to go the way of God. It needs to go the way of the Word of God. It needs to go the way where the Holy Ghost of God can have preeminence, where He can lead us, guide us, instruct us, and teach us. I don't believe most people understand how tenuous everything is in America right now. We are on the precipice of going over the cliff and being destroyed. I hear the word socialism. Friend, Lyndon Baines Johnson introduced socialism to America in the 1960s. We've gone through socialism. We're on the preface of communism. It's almost communism in this nation. And when you get to communism, you have tyrannical government oppressive government, and that's the next move to conquer America and bring her down. Most people in America do not realize the danger that we are presently at right now, right now. This war in Ukraine could explode any minute and drag Europe and America into a world war. The Middle East, Israel, Hezbollah, Hamas, and Iran. We're on the precipice of a full-blown regional war in the Middle East. Then we have China, who says they're going to take Taiwan back. We need to be praying and crying out to God that the mercy and the grace of God might abound. I don't know anything about a world war, and most of you watching me may remember it, you may have had a loved one in it. My dad was in World War II. But they're all dead and gone now. And we're going to repeat history if we don't get on our knees and repent and get a hold of God. I, I want to say this. You may disagree. That's your prerogative. It is my personal belief right now America should be praying for a wartime president. Hear me. Please listen to me. We need to be praying for a war time president because I believe the coming months are going to be so dangerous, so tenuous that anything could happen. Jesus said at Matthew 24, 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must happen come to pass. I want to emphasize the word must. Jesus said this must come to pass. I don't want to see it come to pass. I don't want to see a world war. I pray against that destruction and that chaos, but the word of God says it must come to pass. Friend, whatever God has said, Whatever God has spoken, it's going to come to pass. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? And hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I've got news for the world. Everything in this book is going to come to pass. Every word, every jot, every tittle, it's all going to come to pass because it is the word of God. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God's word will not pass away and God's word will not fail. This Bible's been through the flood it's been through the fire. It's been in chaos and judgment, but it always comes forth true and it still stands no matter what the world does, no matter what Europe does, China does, America does. When God gets through his word, it's still going to be standing, amen. You've got to understand the power that is in the word of God. Now we have something in America that is better known as propaganda. Propaganda is information, especially biased and misleading 
and it's used to promote or to publicize a particular political cause, a theme, a motif, or a point of view that is not genuine and that is not factual. I, I, I really am concerned about the citizenry of this nation. Every network, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, all these networks have these spinning heads, these talking heads, and they lie about absolutely everything. But I've got good news for you. You want the truth? This is not propaganda. This is not a book of lies. This is not a book of fallacy. This is the word of almighty God. Hallelujah. And when everything is ruined and destroyed, this word of God will still be standing in the end. Amen. They're trying to deceive us. They lie about everything. These are villainous fraudsters. They are purveyors of great falsehood. If you look and you read the conservative news, what is on television for the most part is a lie. They are lying about everything. This is why I said it is illusory. It is chicanery. It is trickery. It is absolute deception. Deception. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. The Apostle Paul said, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, he said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. I want you to listen closely. I want you to be analytical. I want you to analyze that verse. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? The coming of the Lord. Our gathering together unto him. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. With all the lies and all the chicanery, and all the trickery, the stage is being set for this man of sin, this son of perdition, this man of utter destruction to come on the scene. Now, I, I know some people do not believe in a literal, physical antichrist. If you will read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if my memory does not fail me, there are 11 pronouns about a man. He, him, and his. 11 male pronouns in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And he's talking about, Paul is talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This man is going to tell the world, I'm God. He will oppose all that is called God. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Shinto, it doesn't matter, Buddha, he's going to oppose all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple showing himself that he is God. Verse 5, 2 Thessalonians 2, 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Why would Paul admonish the church at Thessalonica to remember his words about the Antichrist? Why would Paul say that? Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Because we're going to see things we did not think we were going to see. I know most people believe we should have already been raptured out of here, but we're not. Digital currency 
is just on the horizon. They're doing away with everything that we're used to having and what we've been used to working with. I was talking to a, a real estate agent some months ago. When you go to a real estate closing anymore now, you don't bring a cashier's check or, 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 or whatever the case. You bring wiring instructions for the account number and the routing number. They're doing away with cash and checks. They're doing away with it. What are they doing? They're trying to bring us into a digitized economy and currency where you don't have dollars in your pockets anymore. People will start paying their bills. They're already doing it by their cell phone. But when us older people die off, it's when all of this is going to come to fruition because the young generation are so enamored, they're so addicted to their phones, it begs description. They can't walk down the sidewalk without being in their phones. They can't even talk to people. As a minister, as a person, I get aggravated dealing with businesses now. Text me, send me an email. Hey, let me talk to somebody. I want to talk to a real person. When you call, for the most part, there's a menu. There's a, a computerized voice that you have to deal with. Folks, we're in the net. We're still swimming, but the net is closing in on this nation and around the world. Other nations are more digitized than America. In India, you've seen those men sit there. They got their legs crossed Indian style and they have a basket and a pipe and they start playing and the cobra snake comes up out of the basket. You ever seen that? I'm sure you've seen it. Did you know every one of those cobra snakes have a computer chip in them? Because the government says we want to know how much money you're making off of that serpent. They have to be licensed to have that now. You see, around the world, it's far worse than what it is in America. That's why Donald Trump kept saying repeatedly, I'm just the president of America. He was a nationalist. He was concerned about this nation, not the other nations around the world, but about this nation. But this new world order, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, all of these one world governments or one world institution is trying to come to fruition and these men are demanding it and they're trying to invoke it whether we want it or not. We are in a very, very, very dangerous state and place. Listen to what Paul said to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, but I fear lest by enemies as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Your minds be corrupted. It is Satan's objective to corrupt every mind. I want to say that again. It is Satan's objective to corrupt every mind. Thus Paul said, but I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, his trickery. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Can I tell you salvation is simple? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The smartest question that has ever been asked by a mortal man was the jailer in Acts chapter 16. When Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises and worship God, and suddenly the Holy Ghost came on that jail, shook that jail and opened every jail door. And the Roman soldier understood what would happen to him. He pulled his sword. He was going to take his life. But Paul could see through the light of the gospel. He said, sir, do thyself no harm. We're all here. There was so much 
Holy Ghost conviction in that jail, that jailer asked the smartest question ever asked by a mortal man. He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul answered in there in Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. Hallelujah. All it takes to be saved is to believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Salvation is simple. Salvation is not difficult. Salvation is not hard. That was Paul's concern to the church at Corinth. He said, I, I have consternation, I have fear that Satan will corrupt your minds from the simplicity, the simpleness of Jesus Christ. Even the thief on the cross, he saw a king beside of him. How do you know he saw a king? He said, when you come into your kingdom, he said, remember me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, remember me. Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That man made it. Oh, he, he just barely got in, but he made it because he asked Christ, remember me. Remember me. America needs to pray, God, remember us. God, remember us. Because, friend, God does not have to remember us. God owes us nothing. I said, God owes us nothing. He gave it all when he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son, Jesus, who bled and died and was mutilated and spat upon and blasphemed and cursed and rejected and eviscerated. But he opened not his mouth, but was led like a lamb, dumb before his shears. He didn't speak. He didn't utter anything. He said, for this purpose came I into the world. America, you better repent. You better repent. Cry out to God. Call out to God for mercy. We're going to need mercy in the coming days. If you do not seek God, you will have trouble in your life. But God is our refuge and strength. He's a present help in the time of trouble. God bless you. We love you. We thank you. Please pray for us. Please pray for this ministry that God will continue to use us to preach His Word uncompromisingly. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502 Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. That's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020.